What is going on ladies and gentlemen and in this video I'm going to show you guys five absolutely need to know tips for the Arcanist. If you do not know these tips you are completely gimping yourself. So let's hop into it. Hey, future Horrix here from Post Productions with a jacket now. Guys, please watch until the very end of the video. I do have a bonus clip for you all and you will get a kick out of it. It is a brand new exploit introduced in the ESO with the Arcanist class. And at some point I will make a whole video on how to do it. So please guys, watch until the end so you don't miss out. Tip number one I have for you guys is dynamic cost scaling. The Arcanist is the first class of its kind, so instead of having abilities that statically cost Magicka or statically cost Stamina, their cost is actually determined by your highest resource, and in some tooltips it's actually determined by your lowest resource. Let me give you an example, so we have Escalating Rune Blaze. Notice here on the tooltip it says cost determined by highest maximum resource. Now if we were to stack maximum Magicka, this is how much the ability would cost, which is 2700 maximum Magicka. Now, if you go and stack stamina instead, notice how the tooltip changes. Now the cost is only 2100 stamina. So why does stacking maximum stamina make this ability cost much less when compared to the magic counterpart? Well, the answer is very simple. Your core combat abilities primarily scale from your stamina pool. For example, you break free, you roll dodge, you block, you bash, all of those resources are pulled from your stamina. So to compensate, ESO across the board has made stamina abilities cost significantly less than Magicka. So in my opinion, if you're going to play the Arcanist, I do believe stacking stamina and stacking stamina recovery is going to be a much, much better alternative when compared to the Magicka counterpart. It's just going to be a lot easier to sustain. Now that's not true for all abilities. For example, we do have a Cephalarch's Flow here that specifically costs stamina, no if, ands, or buts unless you take the other morph. Now we do have Recruiter of Tree Ties, which is Magicka only, and then you have abilities like this, Rune of Displacement, where if you take a look at the tooltip, the cost is determined by your lowest maximum resource. So please read the tooltips very carefully when you're build crafting your Arcanist. Coming in strong at tip number two, which is probably the most relevant when it comes to PvP, is lead the beam. So if you are building out Arcanist, you may notice really soon that there is not a lot of damage on this class. It's mostly healing abilities, utility, and tank options. Your only viable DPS option is Fate Carver or the other morph of this. So Fate Carver is the highest DPS spell in the entire game as far as I know, but it has a lot of inconsistencies, especially when your opponent or the NPCs are moving. So for example, this Ogrim here is completely static. It seems to do damage every 0.3 seconds like the tooltip says. Everything's okay. But what happens when you have someone strafing back and forth? Well, this is what happens. As you can see, the crosshair is perfectly on my opponent the entire time I'm channeling this beam and I get zero damage numbers. So if you are going to use this ability in PvP specifically, God Rest Your Soul, you actually have to lead your shots and you have to lead your shots not just a little bit, by a full health bar and a half in order to hit your opponent. So what does that mean? You have to predict your opponent's movement due to the server latency and the hit registry. You have to predict where your opponent is going almost a full second and a half before they even do it. Obviously, when you're playing PvP, your opponents are not potatoes. Well, some of them are. So they are going to move erratically, which makes it near impossible to predict their movements unless you immobilize them or charm them or stun them in some sort of manner. So if you're a masochist and you enjoy being painfully miserable all the time, well, this will help you alleviate some of that. So at least you won't miss your beam all the time. But still, even if you can get a couple ticks to this, it's still one of the highest DPS spells in the entire game. So it's not that bad, but uh, yeah, it kind of is. And this is going to beautifully lead us into tip number 2.5, which is like and sub to the channel if you're enjoying the content. I put some effort into these videos, and if you want to see some top tier Arcanist PvP content and some PvE builds thrown in as well, hit the notification icon. Now, speaking of fake art, that's going to lead us into tip number 3, which is abuse the shields. Now, a lot of you may or may not know that, especially if you're in PvP, you have one of the strongest, if not the strongest, wards in the entire game, and you also have a lot of wards on the kit, which is pretty nice. So, while all this is really cool and dandy, did you know if you use the Morph of Fate Carver, which is going to be the Pragmatic Fate Carver, you actually get a really beefy shield during the duration you're channeling this. On tooltip here is 15k, which what translates into Cyrodiil PvP with the Bowspear Active is around 7.5k shield. 
So while you are channeling this ability, take a look at the health bar, you do get a shield. But did you know you can block cancel this ability and you get the entire 15k shield for doing absolutely nothing so if you know a burst is coming you know someone's going to have some offensive pressure and if you're low on resources and you just simply do not have the resources to cast your impervious room ward or whatever wards or whatever healing building on your bar you can just animation cancel fake carver and keep getting a free 15k damage shield each and every single time you fake cast it Moving on to tip number four is portal positioning. Taking a look at your only mobility skill in the kit, you do have a portal in which you and also your teammates can activate a synergy to travel through. While on paper, this does seem really, really cool and really, really flashy, it has an amalgamation of problems and you should never, ever use this ability ever. I'm going to explain why. Now, unlike Streak, this is a ground ability, meaning if I look here at the archway and I'm trying to spam the ability, nothing will happen. You will actually have to look at the ground in order for this to go off. Now this does cast it in front of you, so you can enter and leave the room. Now when you are using this teleport, you can use it pretty much indefinitely as fast as you are. So what you have to do when you go into this, you can't go back through the portal. You have to actually leave the room and then come back in before it allows you to use it again. So that's pretty good, right? And a huge quality of life option to enable, especially on console, is the quick cast ground abilities. This is going to essentially take two clicks to cast this ability and you're going to limit it down to one. Because most of the time you're going to use this in a very stressful situation and the last thing you need is having to double click this ability in order to cast it. Now that was the pros of the portal. Now let's take a look at some of the cons. So in order to use this portal, you cannot just street. It's not like street. You can't just go up here to the top of the wall and just cast it onto this mushroom or this tree. It, it, it's not going to work. So it's not going to place the portal where you need it. It doesn't work like that. The only way you can effectively place this portal is if you have a direct line of sight and if your current location is tra travelable to the desired location. For example, I want to go to the top of these steps. Well, I'm going to cast it. Look, it goes to the top of the steps. So this actually has some vertical cast range to it. But let's try, for example, go here to the wall. I'm trying to cast this on the wall and it just simply won't allow me to do so, which is really unfortunate. And also, you have to watch your line of sight. If you try to cast this ability while you're line of sighted by some object, it just, just simply will not fire. So you not only have to have a clear line of sight to your destination, but you also have to be able to physically walk to that location. Okay, and a last little tip on the portal. Now, this will crash your game, so I highly suggest if you are going to run this portal, you put this in full screen windowed. If you are not in full screen window, when you are using this portal, it will genuinely screw you over every single time. You can't force close out the game. There's nothing you can do. You gotta completely restart your machine. What happens is if you try to jump while you are trying to use your teleport without a clear line of sight, it will completely crash your game. Check this out. And it's gone. So no, th this isn't me pausing the screen this isn't me doing anything look i'm trying to, to tab out of it there, there, there's absolutely nothing i can do i i can't go to my task manager i'm right clicking closing it won't close the fucking window and if you try to control alt delete nothing will happen you'll go to task manager and if you do not have this in windowed full screen you cannot get this to come up the only way you can get this to come up if you are stuck in full screen you have to window key out you have to go to your second monitor be able to pull up so you'll have a little hovering icon down here right you'll be able to hover over this now it will hover over this it will bring you to this screen while the game is crashed currently and you, there's no interaction you cannot just go up and click on it like if you're full screen it will not allow you to do that what you have to do you have to hover over this and then use your directional keys to toggle down to the elder scrolls online and just hit delete and then yep yeah, now we're good boys now I did save the best for last and that is tip number five, Resonating Glyphic. Now Resonating Glyphic is a deployable NPC in which you and your allies can also target and upon targeting and destroying it, you get amalgamation effects such as weapon spell damage and healing. But notice what I said at the beginning of that sentence, I said a deployable NPC. So what type of builds directly benefit from being able to target an NPC? Yeah, that's right, heavy attack builds. The Arcanist is secretly a heavy attack bombing class. 
No, guys, this is not copium. This is not cap. You can actually do this. Now, I am currently developing a build that can consistently pull this off. So if you want to be around for when that build goes live, don't forget to like and sub and hit the bell notification icon. But you can see here in the background that there is a proof of concept that can be had. You can see we're hitting over a 40k tool tip on trifocus. And that's just on one person in a very, very shoddy put together build. So to all of my PvE enthusiasts out there, if you want to experience Cyrodiil and have fun in PvP, get you a couple of people together, run a heavy attack build, go into Cyrodiil, drop your Glyphics, and you are going to absolutely shrek kids on keeps and resources. The good thing about this type of interaction is that there is nothing that can be done about it, and not only can you target your aura, but multiple people can. So if you have multiple people running the exact same build, you can get a cascading effect of trifocuses on an entire Zerg. You'd easily, easily wipe an entire Zerg of people it keeps. This is why I like the Arcanist so much is because there is so much build variation that can go into a class and it makes theory crafters like myself have an absolutely phenomenal time. I love this class so much and I hope you guys do too. If you made it to this portion of the video, thank you very much. I do have a bonus clip here for you guys. I really hope you enjoy. And before I peace out, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat. If you found anything useful at all in this video, I really appreciate it. Comment, like, and sub, and I'll catch you all in the next one. All right, we got the charm going down the hill. Bash, and he's gone. What the fuck? <laughs> I love this class <laughs> so much, man. Yo, clip it, clip it. He's gone. You won. That's it.